Okay, so since my internet is pretty garbage this week, I don't think I will be pushing greater rifts, unfortunately, because I don't think it would be worth it for me to do really well and try really hard and then get screwed by my internet. So I will probably be farming the rest of this week, but in the meantime, I figured it would be maybe good to talk about my build. That way people, if they're interested, can understand how I play my build and what build it is in general. So I don't want to take all of the credit. I definitely just looked up a build that I thought I would like, and I will link it in the information box. Basically, I'm playing the Impale build with the Shadows Mantle set. And the playstyle of this build, I actually do like quite a bit. So the other build that I used to play on my Demon Hunter last year was uh, Unhallowed Essence, which was the multi-shot build. And that build is decently fun to play, but it's a very squishy build. And I don't, I guess I don't like the kind of play style where if you let them touch you one too many times, you just die. I feel like that's just too much stress for that kind of play style. So I like this build's play style much better. And I definitely feel more tanky, and I like that quite a bit. So the other issue with the multi-shot build was you used a legendary gem that did more damage the further you were away from your target. And the issue with that is there are times where you can still deal damage to a monster that is off your screen. So I didn't like the idea of standing all the way over here and then the mob is like all the way on the side. And I'm still dealing damage, I just can't see what the hell's going on. So I did have somewhat of an issue with that. So basically, here is my build. Impale is my main ability that I deal damage with. And then Shadow Power is just a passive that I leave up. The set bonus that I get means that I get all of these runes and their effects, which makes Shadow Power really amazing, especially the life per hit you gain. Sometimes I am really close to death and a few knife throws out and I heal up to full very quickly. So I think life per hit is really awesome with this build. And then, so essentially, the playstyle of this build is that I want to keep these three abilities, Vengeance, Fan of Knives, and Companion. I want to spam those buttons constantly when they're off cooldown. Fan of Knives, you can see that I gain 40% additional armor for 6 seconds, and that is a buff I want to keep up as much as possible. Vengeance also reduces your damage taken, so these are all they all assist in your survivability, and then this one is just increased in damage. So you basically just want to make sure that these abilities, you spam constantly, making sure they're always active. And then a lot of the items that I am currently using for this set really rounds out this build's playstyle. So for my weapon, if you throw it at an enemy that already has been impaled, then you get Hatred returned. So the really awesome thing about this build is that when you're pushing a Greater Rift, you never run out of Hatred. And that just means you can just throw this forever. Of course, if I'm not throwing it at anything, it will go down. But since in a Greater Rift, your enemies take a while to die, this stays at max pretty much, and I just spam this forever. Um, also, if once that after I spam it once, I can vault for free for a couple seconds. So after I use Impale, Vault costs no resource for two seconds. And Vault is actually really important because with the Elusive Ring, my Elusive Ring is in my Herodric's Cube, Kanai Cube. Sorry, Herodric was the old one, I guess. So Elusive Ring, after you cast Vault, you take reduced damage. So this buff is very important to keep up. A lot of the later Greater Rift stuff that you deal with all of these defensive buffs that you get, it's always extremely important that you keep them up. So this is one of them, this is one of them, and this is one of them. This one, actually, I can forget to put back on if I died. So this one is super important. I actually notice a huge difference when this is not active. This one is also great because since our hatred is pretty much always capped at Greater Rifts, you get even more damage reduction. And then this helps to keep this as a cooldown that can be used all the time. As in, the cooldown and the duration are pretty much the same, so you never 
have a period where this is not active. So two other items that really contribute to this build is this quiver. Impale throws two additional knives, so you can see that it throws three at once in a V formation in front of you, like a cone. And then also enemies hit by knockback suffer 26% increased damage, so vault counts as a knockback in a sense, or a stun, because I have the stun one, or knocked away and stunned for 1.5 seconds. So every time I hit them with vault, they take more damage for six seconds. That's why you generally see me in the middle of the pack as often as I can and as well as I can survive because I want to hit as many targets as I can with my vault and then I also want to stay in the central area of where all the monsters are because of this gem where the second text you see that you grant 3% increased attack speed for each bleeding enemy within 20 yards so if I'm in the center, then I'm in a position where there are the max number of monsters that can be surrounding me, right? And that way I get the most attack speed possible from this gem. But at the same time, you want to make sure you don't get too greedy because there are often times where I'm like, oh, I'm in a really great position. I don't seem like I'm taking too much damage. So I stay there too long. And then the potential of dying is very quick and high at, um, a higher level of greater rift so you also want to be careful but i use the pain enhancer gem i use this one so this one assists with cooldown reduction and also just attack speed and dodge which is awesome for survival and then this one is just purely damage and also reducing the movement speed is very useful as well so something that i definitely noticed when i switched to this build is just I, I just think the damage output for this one is so much better, but maybe that's just my own opinion because I have seen Demon Hunters at the top of the leaderboards with the multi-shot build. Um, I just think maybe I wasn't too experienced with playing it well. And also with that one, you do run out of hatred. So I wasn't too used to that either. But I just remembered that when I was first gearing this character out, I was getting capped at Greater Rift 80 on multi-shot, but once I switched to this build, 80 was a breeze. So I just found that difference so surprising. This is the first time that I've played this build. So I wouldn't say I'm too good at it yet. And I do think that my tendency to spam buttons is bad because I don't know if I do it in any of the Greater Rift videos that I've put up, but there are times where I tumble like too much and that's because I'm spamming my button. So my character like tumbles one too many times or two too many times and <laughs> it's a waste of time. It's a waste of my tumbling and sometimes maybe after my first tumble, I would have been in a good position, but then if I tumble again, I kind of like lost that ideal positioning. So ideally tumble to keep the elusive buff up and then also to stun them for increased damage. Um, if I'm farming with this spec, I swap in Nemesis Bracers. That way I can spawn more um, rare packs for faster clearing. And then I also would maybe just swap out the gems also. So this is for survivability. And then I can just put back in my dex gems for pushing and speed stuff but overall yeah i really like this build i think it's awesome i am just missing a lot of key pieces i think to be able to push higher so for example my weapon i fucked up i should have re-rolled my vitality and for some reason i re-rolled my damage so i could have gotten so much more out of this ancient weapon but i completely ruined it so i'm really sad about that and hopefully I get a primal version of this weapon soon. I'm missing an, an ancient version for my quiver right now, but the stats that I have on this one are pretty ideal. So these are the stats I basically want on my quiver. I just need a ancient version with more stats for it. Uh, so I do have an ancient version for a lot of my gear. This one's the only primal that I have equipped. This neck is not ideal at all. I need to replace this. I need an ancient version of this. I need an ancient version of this, even though the stats on this ring are pretty good. Same with this one, but yeah, I mean, it's a grind. This game is a grind, but I think I've just had a lot of my efforts hindered lately with this stupid internet issue. 
Otherwise, I would be more inclined to farm more often without this gameplay inconvenience. But anyways, oh yes, my follower. So in the past, I have always played with a Templar who is actually, I feel like, maybe more of a defensive follower. And I do like him a lot. I wanted to try out the Enchantress because she has this aura that increases my attack speed. And I figured it'd be really nice for this build. So I have her equipped with this. These, um, what, whatever you want to call it, follower trinkets, you always want it to be the one where your follower can't die. That way you get their buffs all the time. They get to use their spells and abilities every cooldown and you don't have any downtime for your follower. Uh, I found some guide on the internet that said that this weapon would be pretty ideal for Enchantress and I guess the benefit for this weapon is just the secondary stats that you see where there is a chance to chill or blind on hit, which, you know, anything like that is useful. S of Johan is an awesome amulet and I think it's pretty much the core amulet that you want on your follower because that orange text, the chance on hit to pull on enemies towards your target and slow them by 80% every single time that thing procs, it's, it just makes me smile. It's awesome. It groups them all together and also at the same time if the oculus ring procs, this orange text, then you see a yellow circle on the ground and anybody standing in it takes more damage. So if this procs and then she manages to suck them in onto the circle, then that's an awesome thing to happen. Unity, it would be ideal if I was wearing it also, but I don't think that's the ring I would be using for pushing. So I just have her wearing it. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how I end up playing this build. I just tumble keep throwing some shit, keep my cooldowns procced, and I wouldn't say this build is necessarily hard to play. I think you just have to be good about avoiding all the environmental stuff. So up until now, I have been pushing all my greater rifts with dexterity in my items, but I looked at some of the profiles for the top demon hunters that we're pushing and they have resistance to all elements in their slots so I am kind of curious to see if that would make a difference in me being able to survive better and be able to push 96 but I will probably attempt that next week when I am confident in my internet's ability to not fuck me over but hopefully that overview I just gave <laughs> gave you a good idea as to what build I use and to help you understand the Greater Rift videos I put out if you do happen to enjoy them. If you have any questions about this build or anything, feel free to ask me and I will make sure to link this build in the information section. So definitely look it up if you feel like you might like it. Thank you guys for watching.